Welcome to The Power to Change Today, and today I want to have a one-on-one -on -one Bible study with you, and I want to share with you that God wants to provide for you. You're special to Him, you're on His mind today, and He's been speaking to me about His plan to provide for your life and every need you have, spirit, soul, and body, and finances too. You know, Jesus said that He clothes the lilies of the field better than King Solomon. And so if He'll do that for the lilies of the field, for some flowers, for some plants, just think of what He'll do for you. That's what today's program is all about. Everybody has fears that their needs won't be met. Everybody has financial fears too, so whether they have a lot or whether they don't. And I think we've all learned the hard lesson in life. No one else is going to provide for you. But the good news is God will, God provides. So I've dedicated this teaching to you, to your provision and your breakthrough. And when we're done, I believe you're going to agree with me that everything's going to be all right. So are you ready to experience God's provision and His supply for your life? Let's do this. Watch this. Well, everyone knows the verse in Philippians 4.19, My God shall supply your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And I really believe that's going to happen for you, and it's going to start happening like never before, beginning today, because you're going to get a revelation I believe you've never had before. But before we get into that, I want to take you to a less familiar verse where it says that God will provide. It's in Genesis chapter 22. Remember when God calls Abraham to offer up his only son to him. It sounded like an impossible calling and an impossible challenge, but God knew what He was doing. He always does, doesn't He? And if you read on in chapter 22, verse 4, it says, On the third day, and I hope you'll get your Bible out and take notes with me as well, but it says, On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey and me and the boy are going to go over there and worship and come back to you. And Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering and he laid it on Isaac his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went both of them together. And in verse 7 it says, And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Verse 8, And Abraham said, God will himself provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, on together. Now, I want to zero in on what Abraham said when he said, God will provide himself. God will himself provide. God will himself provide. And in fact, it says God will himself provide the lamb. And we'll get to that in a minute. But this is a really powerful truth because the key to God's provision in Abraham's life was Abraham's belief that God would provide. And, and the key to God's provision in your life is going to be your belief that God will provide. And where do we get that belief from? From this verse. God will himself provide. You see, Abraham understood that God was his source. From every angle and every way of looking at it, he knew God was the source of providing the sacrifice and the seed and the harvest. God will Himself provide. I want you to say that over your life. God will Himself provide. Say that out loud if you, if you don't mind. Say that. God will Himself provide. That means that we need to simply trust Him and just do what He says. That's really what trust is. Just do what He says. Not because it's magic or it's some way to get God to do something. It's just because He's smarter than us. His way is the best way. God always provides as we simply trust Him by doing what He says. Think about it in the wedding, at the wedding of Cana, it's another example. When Mary said to the servants, whatever He tells you to do, do it. And the miracle of provision happened. I believe there's a miracle of provision that's going to happen for you today. And here in Genesis 22, God tells Abraham to offer up his son. Take now your son, your only son, and offer him up to me, He says. Now listen. The whole time, even after God said that, before that, during that, and after that, God was planning to provide the ram, the lamb, so to speak, caught in the thicket, remember? God had already planned the provision before 
he told Abraham what to do, and even before Abraham decided he was going to do it. Now, I wonder today what God is planning to provide for you. I think about it. God already planned to provide the lamb for, for Abraham in, in substitution for Abraham offering his son. God already knew what he was going to do. God had a plan of provision, and God has a plan of provision for you. I wonder what God's planning for you today. You know, the fun and fascinating thing is we'll never know what he's got, the provision that he has planned for us until we actually do what he's already told us to do. That's what walking by faith is all about. Now, let's keep going here because I want to point out some really cool things. Look at another aspect of this verse. In verse 8, it says, God, Abraham says, God will himself provide the lamb. So not only will God himself provide, which by the way, when it says God will himself provide, that tells us that we're not the ones that are going to do it. Nobody else is going to do it. God's going to do it by himself as we simply trust him and act on his word because he's going to get all the glory when he does all the providing. And his provision is always better than our provision. Anything we can come up with for ourselves is going to be inferior to what God wants to provide for you. That's why whatever you give him, God always gives back to you in better condition. You gave him your old, broken, lost, dead heart, and he gave you a new heart beating, blood of Jesus pumping heart that will never, ever fail. You gave him your old fleshly life and God gave you a new spirit life. You gave him your past sins and he gave you his righteousness. You gave him your broken down body and he gave you a body filled with the Holy Spirit where the resurrection power of God, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in you. You, you gave God your lost soul and he gave you a restored soul. Well, whatever you give him, he always gives back in better condition. That's the way he is. But it says, let's go back to this verse. God will himself provide the lamb. Now, it's, now what, who is the lamb here that God will provide? Jesus is the lamb. Because Abraham says God will provide the lamb, but God ends up providing a ram, which is different than a lamb. He provides a ram caught in the thicket later in this chapter but it says he will provide the lamb. So the lamb he's talking about is Jesus. Jesus is the lamb, and Jesus is our provision. The lamb is God's way of providing for our every need. Wow, do you see that? The lamb of God is God's way. Jesus is the lamb of God, he, and he's God's way of providing for all of our needs. He's not only, he provides, uh, he provides forgiveness, he provides healing. He provi well, we're going to get to what he provides and what he supplies us with in just a couple minutes. But Jesus is not only the substitute for our sacrifice. In other words, we don't have to make a sacrifice. We don't have to offer up our Isaac to God. We have to just surrender our trust to God, and God provides the lamb. Jesus is not only the substitute for our sacrifice, He's our sacrifice, he's our offering, he's our provision, he's our everything. And Romans 8.32 says, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not also with him freely give us all things? Now, how complete is God's provision for you? It says he will freely give you all things. With Jesus, he will freely give you all things. Jesus is our provider from inside of him flows everything we will ever need in our lives. And there are four basic needs that we all have, four powerful needs that each and every one of us has that God will supply and God will provide for. And I want to talk about those four things in our, in our remaining time together. I hope this is encouraging you. And you know, feel free to, to, to contact me and engage with me on social media or the number that's going to show up on your screen. Feel free to connect with us or on our website. Um, but I'm going to continue to teach and continue to study the Bible with you one-on-one. -on -one. Are you ready? So I want to talk to you now about the four things that God will provide. Say that again, though. God will himself provide. Now, what are these four things that he's going to provide? Let's check it out. The first thing he provides is forgiveness of sins and fellowship with God. 
forgiveness of sins, the first need we have that God provides is He provides forgiveness and fellowship, forgiveness of our sins and fellowship with God. John 1.29 says, Behold, remember John the Baptist says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So the most important provision, the most important need we have, and boy, you need to contact your loved ones, your friends, anybody that's not saved, get this teaching in their hands. This will lead them to the Lord. Because the most important need that each of us has is a relationship with God. And in Isaiah 59, it says, Your sins have separated you from God. So by removing the sin of the world, by becoming the sin of the world on the cross, Jesus removes the barrier. If sin separates us from God, Jesus comes to, to remove the sin. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin. Why does He take away the sin? Because it's the thing that's standing in between us and our fellowship with God. Sin is what stands in the way. And Jesus took it away. He became sin. He crucified it. He buried it. And He removed it, the Bible says, as far as east is from west. What grace. What glory. What a God. And He removes our sins for us. So the first need we have is forgiveness. I think if you think about, our, think about your life, think about, when I think about my life, there's nothing that matters more. There's nothing that I needed more and nothing that I am more grateful for than the forgiveness that God has provided for me, that He's removed my sin from me, never to remember it again. I might remember it sometimes, but God never remembers it. And I'm learning and I want to encourage you to learn to forget what God forgets. Remember what He remembers. He remembers His covenant. Forget what He forgets. He forgets your sins and your transgressions, and He'll never remember them again. Let's look at the second thing that God provides. It's found in Exodus chapter 12. Uh, and in Exodus chapter 12, remember, this chapter is all about the Passover, the lamb, the Passover lamb, the blood that would be shed over each, and the blood put over everybody's doorposts in Egypt, all the Jewish people's doorposts in Egypt, so that, the, so that the, the, when judgment came, the plague of death would come, it would see the blood and pass over, remember? So this is a picture of the blood of Jesus. And it says in verse 5 of Exodus chapter 12, Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight, which, by the way, Jesus was killed the 14th day of the month at twilight. And so this is a prophetic picture of Jesus, the Lamb of God. Then it says in verse 7, Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. Verse 8, They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Verse 9, Do not eat any of it raw or boiled with water, but roasted its head and its legs and its inner parts, and you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains till the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it with, the, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Now watch this, verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, strike all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, verse 13, the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and no plague will befall you to destroy you when the land of Egypt is struck. So listen, the second thing that God provides is divine protection. First, he provides forgiveness. Second, he provides divine protection. Notice Exodus 12, 13, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when the land of Egypt is struck. No plague. Reminds me of Psalm 91, verse 10, when it says, No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. And I love what the message translation says. Evil can't get close to you. Harm can't get through the door. Wow. You see, what hurts this world doesn't have to hurt you. So let's expect divine protection today. Now let's keep going because God has so much more for you. God will himself provide. I want you to say that out loud again with me. Say that. God will himself provide. And then we go down, if you keep going in Exodus chapter 12, down in verse 36, it says, The Lord caused the Egyptians to look favorably upon the Israelites, and they gave the Israelites whatever they asked for, 
So they stripped the Egyptians of their wealth. Now, while this is a powerful picture of how everything that the enemy has taken from you, everything the devil has stolen from you, everything that you've lost over the years is going to be restored. It said whatever they asked for, the Egyptians gave it to them. The Bible says if the thief is found, he has to repay and restore sevenfold. In Proverbs chapter 6 and in Joel chapter 2, it says, remember that God says, I will restore the years that the worm has eaten. And it says here in Exodus chapter 12, so they stripped the Egyptians of their wealth. Sounds so much like Proverbs chapter 13 when God says the wealth of the, of the sinner will be stored up for the righteous. So God provides divine provision. This is their, this is their finances. This is their, their sustenance. This is their physical needs. God wants to provide for your physical needs. And today is your day to activate God's provision for your needs spiritually, spirit, soul, and body, and your finances too. And I really want to um, I really want to encourage you to expect God's provision in your finances. And so many people are in fear over their finances, their future, um, the economy, what's going on in the world. It, it may look good at times, it may look bad at times. It's a, up, it's a roller coaster up and down, but we're, we don't have to be connected to this world's economy. We can be connected to God's divine economy, God's divine provision. And where did all that provision come from? Again, they put the blood over the doorposts, and when they left, they said, hey, give us your clothes, your gold, your silver, your riches on our way out. And, and, and the Egyptians actually said, get out of here and take the money and take everything you want. And Satan will let go of your stuff and all the stuff that he's stolen from you and your family and your generations that have gone, beyond, gone before you. Satan will let go of that stuff when you tell him to. He'll let go of that stuff when you ask for it back. He'll let go of that stuff when you recognize he's the thief that came to steal, kill, and destroy, but God is the God who restores and provides your needs, whatever they are. God provides financially for you. God provides for your every need. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. He doesn't provide all your greed. He provides all your need. But listen, you having your bills paid, that's a need. You having money to give to your children and your children's children, your grandchildren, that is a need. That's not greed. That's not, that, there's, and there's so many people that are hurting. God wants to bless you to be a blessing because there's so many people that need someone who knows how to trust God for their provision. And I believe that's you and that's me. And number four, the fourth thing God provides is he provides divine healing. So divine forgiveness, divine provision, divine healing, all of these things are yours, divine protection, as we mentioned. But here, here's healing in Psalm chapter 105, verse 37. I want to read this to you from the New Living Translation. It says, but he, he brought his people safely out of Egypt, again, because of the blood. He loaded them with silver and gold, and there were no sick or feeble among them. You know, think about this. God provides forgiveness. God provides protection. God provides provision, financial provision, and God provides divine healing. He did all of these things because of the blood of Jesus or because of the blood of a lamb in the old covenant, but we have a better covenant with God. In fact, Hebrews chapter 8 verse 6 says, but now has he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he's the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Notice what he says there in Hebrews chapter 8. Verse 6, it's a better covenant established upon better promises. And maybe we'll talk about this more in detail another time, but it's because of better blood. They had the blood of a, of a lamb or a blood of a, of a goat, and God provided forgiveness, God provided protection, God provided blessing and financial provision, and God provided healing. And if he did that with the blood of a goat... How much more the blood of his son? He says it's better, a better covenant with better promises. Boy, I hope you're encouraged by this because a better covenant means that it has to at least do what the old covenant did and then some. It, 
a better covenant can't do less than what the, old, what the old one did, what the worst one did. If it's a better covenant, that means it's got to at least do what the old one did and then some. And the old one provided forgiveness. The old one provided protection. The old covenant provided financial blessing. And the old covenant provided healing. And we have a new covenant, better covenant, better promises, better blood, the blood of Jesus. And wow, when you get a hold of that, man, your life is going to take off because you're no, you're, you're no longer living under this system of, I got to beg God, I've got to fight for what's mine, I've got to, you know, go out and just figure out all the million ways to make a million dollars or the million ways to pay my bills. No, when you get a hold of God himself, God will himself provide, that's when you're going to begin to have peace in your life, peace that'll flow like a river because you'll feel forgiven You'll know that protection is over you. You'll know that the blessing and provision is coming your way. And you'll know that healing is yours as well. Now, there's so much more that I want to share with you. And that's why I want to sow into your life as you sow your seed today. We're coming to a close in today's teaching. But listen, this is how we activate God's provision for our lives, by doing what he tells us to do. You see, no matter what you're going through today, God will provide, just as Abraham, God provided for him when he simply trusted God and did what he said. His son Isaac knew how to access God's provision as well. It says in Genesis 26 that there was a famine in the land, but Isaac stayed there, just as God told him, and he sowed his seed in the land of famine. In verse 12, notice what it says. It says, Genesis, I think we'll put this up for you, Genesis 26, verse 12. It says, now Isaac sowed in that, in that land and reaped in the same year, a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And Galatians 4.29 says, You, like Isaac, are children of promise. In other words, because it worked for Isaac and Abraham, it'll work for you. So I want to invite you today to do what they did. So in the land of the gospel, no matter how dry it's been for you, I believe as you step out in faith and sow your seed into the gospel, God will provide for you every need, just as he did for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's under a blood-sworn oath to do it for you because you belong to Christ, your Abraham's seed, and heirs of the promise. And when you sow your best seed today, I'm convinced God already has a provision that is going to be activated by your seed. And part of that provision is this broadcast. And part of that provision is a collection of teaching that I put together just for you, which is all about experiencing freedom, financial freedom, emotional freedom, um, relationship freedom, freedom of every kind. There's so much more I'd want to share with you, but not enough time. That's why I just selected some really anointed resources, put them together for you, wrote some books for you, and I want to get these in your hands today. Check this out, and I'll be right back to pray for you. In the book Genesis, chapter 22, verse 8, before God had provided the offering, Abraham told his son Isaac, the Lord will provide. In verse 13, after God provided, Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 says, Though it cost all you have, get understanding. In this brand new three CD series entitled Freedom from Financial Fatigue, Pain and Pressure, you will once and for all get understanding about God's provision. There is no doubt God is a God of increase. There is absolutely no doubt He wants to increase you and there's no doubt he wants to begin doing it today. You will also receive today's message, God Will Provide. These series are recipes for financial freedom and every Jesus follower should have one and pass it along to your friends after you listen to it. Freedom from financial fatigue, pain and pressure and today's message, God Will Provide, are available for only $35. And if you call now to order, Gregory Dickow will add his hot off the press 78 page book called The Cure, The Antidote to All Pain and Unhappiness. Offer only good while supply lasts. Plus, if you have not taken advantage of this month's offers, Gregory Dickow has asked his team to create the Experience Freedom Collection. This fresh and current content includes this teaching in its entirety, God Will Provide, and Freedom from Financial Fatigue, Pain and Pressure, plus the CD series, Freedom from Guilt, and the 80-page book, Silencing the Accuser, The Power of a Guilt-Free Life, plus the CD series, Freedom from Loneliness, and the 84-page book, 
triumphing over loneliness, the influence of connection. There is more. You will also receive the CD series, Freedom from Pain and Unhappiness, and the 72-page book, The Cure, The Antidote for All Pain and Unhappiness. Plus, the CD series, Freedom from Negativity. This is a one-time offer. If you were to buy these products individually, the cost would be more than $250. Gregory Dickow wants you to have this Experience Freedom Collection, all 24 messages and books in its entirety for only $99. But you must call now. Quantities are limited. Call, write, or click to order your Experience Freedom Collection for a gift of $99 today. For a limited time, you can receive all 24 CDs on a USB. Well, God will provide, and as you heard, this is a very special offer. The Experience Freedom Collection is a must for anyone that wants freedom in every area of your life, spirit, soul, body, and finances as well. Call me today, and when you do, you'll not only receive the collection, but you'll be partnering with me to bring this freedom all around the world. We are getting the gospel out. People are getting saved, healed, set free from the mindsets that are limiting them and defeating them. Join this movement that is changing the world one life at a time, one thought at a time. Get this teaching God will provide in its entirety along with the entire collection, freedom from financial pain and so much more. Now let me pray for you before you go. Father, I thank you for every person watching this today. Give them hope that you are their provider. You will provide their every need. Lord, I thank you that you will give them a revelation that you are good and that fear will be a thing of the past in every person's life watching today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, listen, God will provide. Believe it and expect it. And connect with me on Facebook. Tell me what God is doing in your life through this ministry of God's love and grace. I want to engage with you. Thanks so much for joining me today. And don't miss our next broadcast next Sunday. And, re and remember, God's not mad at you. He is mad about you. I can't wait to see you next week. God bless.